previously. It's kind of making me want to build a gravel bike. If I do build a gravel bike, I don't want it to be just any old ordinary gravel bike. I want it to be different. I want it to be unique. A unique frame was acquired and the paint was stripped. This was also done with a matching fork. I then went mad and cut off the rim brake mounts on both. After lots of filing and sanding, they were looking pretty good. I then painted them a retro Cannondale blue. But ended up ruining it with some awful decals that were opaque and ended up ripping. Since then, the frame has been stalled badly and had the paint damaged. And this leads us up to the present. I've got to undo this damage before I can continue. This wasn't too hard to do. With the Cute Thief's litter tray cleaning bottle filled with water, I sprayed the frame and some fine grit sandpaper and smoothed out any roughness, like sending a chav to a private school. Just like me first thing in the morning, it's not a pretty sight. But once cleaned of dust and debris, it's prepped and ready for a can of paint to the face. Once dry, I recycle an old joke and use a rough scotch pad, not to be confused with a flat in Glasgow, to prep the paint for the next step. And the next step is decals, good ones this time. I went to the best in the business, Lucy at IndiePrint. She didn't have retro Cannondale designs ready to go, but she kindly offered to make me some. This took a lot of work to find the right fonts, colours and intricate details, which is why there's been a bit of a gap in the bike build. Quality takes time, and these are 10 times better quality than the ones I had on before. Lucy had a retro Ashton signature bike as a reference. I won't be using these decals, but if you have an Ashton Cannondale project, you know where to go. This is a big decal to fit, and I'm pretty nervous about messing this up again after waiting so long. In the last video, I was told I could use water to give more time to fit decals. Once in place, it can be squeezed out, and when dry, we'll still have a strong bond. So let's try that. Okay, so that worked pretty well. I will admit, I perhaps didn't get it as straight as I'd have liked. I was still scared of ruining either the decal or paint if I tried to take it off to reposition it, but I'm happy enough. I then set up on the frame with the rest of the decals. Because they're smaller, I didn't use any water. To complete the factory look, I got some team sponsors they would have had in the 90s. I'm not supported by them, and in hindsight, maybe I should have had some custom ones made of my actual sponsors, but that would have put the build back even further, so these will do. It still looks great to be fair. Once stick it up and dry, I explain the importance of protection to the frame by giving it a few coats of lacquer. I wanted to do this after applying the decals to give it that pro look. And I tell you what, I'm so pleased with how it's looking. I didn't forget about the fork by the way. That had the same treatment and also looks great. Although if I'm being picky, and I am, I did make a mistake when I tried to dry the water from fitting these decals with a heat gun and I may have slightly warped the edges of a couple of letters. Annoying, but you probably wouldn't have noticed if I didn't mention it. It's been months, but I finally get to unwrap the tape parts and see how they actually look. So far so good, but there's one finishing piece that will really be the cherry on top. A yellow shock boot. It's a bit of a tight fit and takes some wrestling to get on. A little bit when I got some little boots for the cute thief. Only difference is this fork doesn't have claws and a taste for blood. Even though I never fully got the boots onto him, I did with the fork and it looks so cute, I mean cool. Now the fork is complete, it's time to finally start building a bike. Rather than clamp the frame, I'll add a seat post and clamp that instead. 
The cute thief got me this silver seat clamp, lots of clamps going on, but I think black would be better. I'll send him out and see if he can find one. Little scared, I really hope this doesn't cause the paint to chip. Phew, no damage. Even though I scalded his cuteness over the silver clamp, I can't fault him on the post. It's a carbon Eastern EC70 and it's one of the better posts from back in the day and one I always wanted. Stoked! Now with the frame in a better position, I can remove the paint blockers and get some parts fitted. Sorry, I can't help but just stand back and look at it again. It's even nicer than I'd hoped. Right, less admiration and more builderation. I have a headset. It's a headset for this frame. It's a headset for this frame to fit this headshock fork. It's a weird headset for a weird part, and I'll explain why in a moment. But first, I'm gonna please a lot of you. No, not like that, you dirty minds. I'm not gonna thwack in the headset like a chimp in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Instead, I'm living in the year 3022 and we use a threaded bar left over from my fork build to gently caress the cups smoothly into the frame. Isn't that a nice change? Well, it would have been nice if the cups went straight. As it stands, they're more crooked than a badly hung photo of Boris Johnson leaning against the Tower of Pisa placed in a house with sagging foundations. Living in the year 3022 sucks. I want to be a chimp again. <laughs> right, from now on, you can refer to me as the star child. Stems, here's one. It's a Coda, which is Cannondale's components brand and specific for the Hedgehog fork with its oversized stirrer. It looks so weird seeing such a big stirrer combined with a small 25.4 bar clamp. I've not yet decided which way up I'll run it, so I'll start higher and lower it later if I want to be more aero. So I mentioned this is a weird headset for a weird part earlier. The weirdness is that the system works differently from any other fork, headset and stem combo I've ever used before. Rather than a normal headset where you have loose fitting angular bearings that centre themselves as you preload the system, Cannondale use standard bearings which have a much tighter press fit, that once everything's pressed in doesn't need any preloading at the top cap. In fact, there isn't even a top cap at all. Due to this tolerance fit, the steerer and bearings are a bit of an odd size. I always thought they were just 1.5 inch steerers, but they're actually 1.56 inch, which means you have to make sure you have the right parts. I never worked on this system before and had a little panic I didn't have the right size parts, but after a little persuasion I did manage to get it all together and feeling good. In place of a top cap, I fit the forks lockout instead. It's certainly a unique looking start. And I'm not slowing down. A unique bike needs a unique bar. Because this is a gravel bike, I wanted drop bars, but I also wanted to use mountain bike disc brakes. The solution was some custom made bars by local builder Vandal Metalworks. These give the effect of a drop bar, but still let me use mountain bike components. I painted these black a while ago, and there is a little bit of damage from storage, but only where my grips will be, so I'll just leave it. I'm looking forward to trying them, and I think the quirkiness is a perfect fit for the bike. Now I'm sure a lot of people won't like the looks, but it's my bike and I like it so tough. Not sure what the best angle to have them at is yet, I'll cross that bridge later. Let's turn this chassis into a rolling chassis by adding some rounds. If you've seen my previous videos, if not, why not, links in the description, 
You know I already have my rear round already built using a Chris King hub and Light Bicycle Super Light 650B rim. The Cute Thief tried to match this with the front round and did get a matching Chris King hub. Only I don't think numbers are a strong point as this is a 26 inch wheel. Well, I guess when you're small all wheels look big. Fortunately I do have a Light Bicycle 650B rim ready to go, I just need to swap it over to the hub. Cool, well there we go. Before I fit the tyre I divulged the wheel with its kinks. I then fit a matching Hutchinson override tyre. Pop the beads into place, deflate it and feed it some milk. Then pop the valve core back in and reinflate. Easy. With it being an antique bike, I need an antique wheel securing system. Shimano were the best quick releases in my opinion, and this XT model will do nicely. Man, this bike just keeps on getting better and better. I see a hole. I want to put something in it. In this case, a race face arse bearing. Loop time. Insert innuendo here. Please don't slip. Please don't slip. It was at this point I knew I'd forgotten something. At the Marvin's Classics, I met the nice folk from G Technique and they gave me some goodies including their ceramic coating designed to give a tough, slippery surface so that dirt doesn't stick to it as much. This bike is an ideal time to try it out. First off, I have to prep the frame to make sure there's no grease or oil on it. Then it's a case of applying the ceramic coating to their provided pad and give the frame a full wipe down. Once applied, you leave it a couple of minutes, then buff it up with a provided cloth. They say it can make paint jobs slightly more vibrant, and it even works if your frame has protective wraps. I hope it works though, as I would like this paint job to stay nice and clean. Now I've sold my soul for some freebies, let's get back to business and see what cranks we have. And now we're talking. Cute Thief coming up trumps with some Shimano XTR cranks. Aluminium cranks don't get much better than this. Although Tuxedo Boy must think I've got strong legs with a hefty 40 tooth chainring. This was a red chainring at some point and that would have clashed pretty badly. Fortunately it fell in some sodium hydroxide and the colour fell off. Some blue chainring bolts is a nice touch though. Not quite the same blue so we'll have to see if they work or not. Ah, well, after getting hyped up on these cranks, it seems they don't work with this arse bearing and there's a lot of side to side play. So I'm jumping ship to another brand and I'll fit this SRAM dub arse bearing instead. Then instead of aluminium cranks, I'm going to some carbon life forms instead. With a 34 tooth chainring which maybe better suits my chicken legs. Now let's give the hub a smile with a nice set of teeth. The cassette is... The cassette is a Shimano XTR which is meant to match the cranks. Now it may not match but it's still good. Well I hope it is. It's second hand and has been dropped on the floor. So fingers crossed it's still got some life in it yet. To match the cassette at least is a sweet XTR rear mech. 
There's something about XTR stuff that's just cool, I think. Even it does remind me of a chicken wing for some reason. Now they say don't mix your drinks. I wonder if the same thing applies for drivetrain parts. Maybe the cow cat had mixed his drinks before going out thieving. Either way, I'm now going to fit the SRAM chain. Just you watch. Now I can't change gears without this thing, an XTR stick shift. An auto box would be easier, but I like the experience when I can change gears myself. Only thing is, I currently have no way to mount this to my bar. Where's the clamp? Have no fear, this is a neat solution where I can share a specific brake clamp reducing clutter on the bars. Well I may as well let the cute thief out the bag regarding brakes, as I can't do the gears without fitting at least one. No surprises really, I'm a huge fan of the Hayes Dominion brakes, so for this bike I'm using the lighter A2 model. You have to experience these brakes to truly understand how nice they feel. I'm yet to try any brake with a lever action this light. Right, with the shifter added, let's see them on the bars. Feels really nice. Now the shifter paddles could be a little closer, but I can still reach them fine, so I'm happy enough. Rotor wise, I'm going for 160mm rotor up front for a bit more power than the 140mm I have in the back. Well the front brake went on really easily, will the rear do the same? Bear in mind I made this contraption to retrofit onto this frame. It's interesting, let's say. I've had a few people ask me what this adapter is. I'm not really sure. I've seen a few of them on Amazon, advertised as Gary Fisher adapters I think. Have a search for retro disc adapter and it should come up. I've also had people say that this frame will definitely crack with the forces. Yeah, you're probably right. No doubt because I hand filed this adapter level, it's a little bit off. Not by much, but I can't get it to run rub free. I've got it as good as I can get and I'll just have to let it wear level over a few rides. But I can't ride it without working gears, so I'll fit a wired wireless system. Despite being old and used, I can still set up gears well. Plus, despite being old and used, these gears feel sweet. And that's XTR for you. Next up are some bar gloves. The cute thief's trying to colour code the bike, so he chose yellow, but it's a little darker than the graphics. Hopefully it still works, but it's easily swappable if not. I'm relatively new to using bar tape, so there's a strong chance I've wrapped it the wrong way. But once on, it feels great. Do you think the yellow is overpowering though? Any grip colours you think I should do instead? Next up, I need to clean my fingernails. But I also need to neaten up the brake hoses. I use this adapter to change my cable mounts into hose guides for the rear brake. And I use these sticky guides for the fork. They're not as neat as dedicated guides, but they sure beat wrecking my paint job with zip ties. Much better. The foot rests go on next. Despite having way more clips than my usual platforms, they like to identify as clipless. And who am I to argue? I've never used clipped, I mean sorry, clipless pedals before, so this could be interesting. The last major part to install is the arse perch. More colour coding attempts. I gotta give it to the thief. Despite limited colour eyesight, He's done well with this. Pretty cool, or too much? What do you reckon? Look what just arrived. 
This should be nicer than a random silver sea clamp. Yep, much happier with that. One last thing, and something I've never fitted to a bike before, is a bag, or a handlebar bag to be precise. This isn't only practical for carrying treats, but should also help hide the cables messing up the front end. I'm sure this will get mixed opinions too, but I kind of like it in a sadistic way. Now here's a little easter egg for you. I did consider using a rigid lefty fork in the early stages, and even painted one up. I prefer the head shock, but if it ever breaks, I'll stick this on until it's fixed. Ah, after waiting for so long, I finally get to try it out. No stunts though, this is a stuntless bike with no fun allowed. Oh, go on then, maybe just one stunt. And I tell you what, it's a monster at the wheelies. First impressions are pretty great. It feels fast, the bars feel fantastic, and the head shock is smooth. Ah, I'm absolutely so stoked. The cute thief seems to approve too. I've never seen him this stoked on a build before. This has been the longest and most involved build I've done yet, and it's been totally worth it. I think this is the most gorgeous build yet, and I'm actually a little worried about riding it and getting it scratched and damaged. I'm especially concerned about the strength of the frame at the disc. I do think this will kill it one day, but I'll try to avoid using the rear brake as much as possible to prolong it. I know I've mentioned the head check a few times already, but here's a reminder of how cool they are. They're a great gravel option if you have a frame that'll fit, as they're light, stiff, and have a full lockout. Cannondale should definitely push these again. Plus, I can definitely confirm a 650B wheel with 47mm tyre will fit. I've got to say a huge thanks to Lucy at IndiePrint, Andy at Vandal Metalworks, and Wayne Walton for their help with the build, as well as my support from Light Bicycle and Hayes Brakes. I'd love to know your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments. Give me a like and sub if you enjoy my content, and I hope you join me again soon. I've got a few more interesting builds on the way. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great week. See you later.